placed with her. I agree. But don't forget, Becky's no dummy either. She may have no education, but she does have intelligence. I know that. I figured it out already, and I'll be cool. Good. Keep up the good work. Keep in touch. I'd love to. Why don't I come up and see you sometime? Like tonight. I'm busy, Marco. I'm very busy. Well, too bad for you. Don't you say I never offered is all I can say. Yeah, but then again, you're quite right, Mrs. Lord. You're not alone anymore. How presumptuous of me to question you. Becky? Yes. I'll be in contact in the morning. Good luck. Good night. Oh, hi, kid. Hi, Marco. I guess you're on the line with Her Majesty. Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah, where do you want to start? That bad, huh? Well, for the time being, it is, yeah. You ever run into anybody who thought they had all the answers, Becky? Sure. All the time. Yeah, and they're always people in important positions, like Dorian Lord. They get used to their authority, and they feel they've got to have all the answers. They won't even consider being wrong. For instance, there's something she's about to do. I won't bore you with the details, but I know a way to do it better. And will she listen to me? No. Right. You know, I think it's the money. Gets right up into their brains and destroys them. Oh, or the power, whatever it is. They're not about to listen to somebody who's had no education or training. You didn't go to school, neither? Well, yeah, I did off and on over the years. Uh, more off than on. I never graduated high school. But don't you go telling that to anybody, because I'll never speak to you again. Don't worry. I never even made it to high school. Really? <laughs> Now, that's one more thing we have in common, huh, Beck? You know another thing? Mm. I don't care much for Dorian Lord myself. Oh, that lady's got a lot of problems. You know, I keep thinking, if I had her degrees and her power and her money, and she won't even give me a chance, you know, there's a lot I could do for her. There's a lot I know. All I need is one break, just one. Then I'd show her what I'm worth, education or no. You know, I know what you're talking about. Every time I get up to sing at the Blue Ridge Club, I start thinking, if just one good agent, one record producer saw me, I'd be on my way. And you certainly would. You see, I haven't got your talent. I haven't got a voice or a specific ability with which to wow the world. But I've got something. I've got something that makes me want to get up in the morning, makes me want to get out there in the middle of everything and go somewhere and do something and be somebody. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. You know, Marco, I think you and me are soulmates. I mean, our hearts, they work on the same beat. Is that mm -hmm. Oh, you're just saying that to be nice. What do you mean, nice? You mean you don't think I'm a loser like Dorian Lord does? Probably the rest of Landview. No. Well, I'm just living in Landview for the time being. I ain't part of it. And I know what you're talking about. I feel it, too. We just got to keep on, and, and we're going to show them all someday. I hope so. Hungry? Yeah, I think so. We go somewhere, get something to eat, and figure out how the hell we got this way. I ain't been able to figure it out so far. Well, it's in our background somewhere. Maybe we can dig it out. Okay. <laughs> Next. 
right here on ABC. You know, the all-American 
male who, who is out trying to get everything he can from a woman, who takes out a woman with the idea in mind that he wants to get her to bed, something like that. How refreshing. Oh, don't get me wrong. I mean, I've done my share of playing around. But I found out that it's not as satisfying, that I don't enjoy it as much if there's not some real deep feeling involved. Well, that's because you're more sensitive than most men. When I was kissing you, I, I got real carried away. And I thought how nice it would be to just let go. But I knew that I'd feel guilty about it. That's why I stopped. I'm glad you did. Really? Richard, I'm very attracted to you. You know that. And when I'm in your arms, I'd probably do anything you'd say. But in my heart, I don't want to rush into an affair either. I think we should give this relationship a chance to grow. This is the way I feel. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> There's one thing that puzzles me. And that's how you could have grown up in a vagabond existence with Europe's high society and still have the morals and feelings that you do. Well, somebody had to hang on to some decency in the family. Mother certainly did. Well, let's be kind and say Mother has a taste for the exotic. The exotic can be expensive. She doesn't mind paying for it. Does that me mean that one day you'll be very rich, Richard? <laughs> oh, I certainly hope not. <laughs> You can't mean that. Oh, I mean it. One of my most cherished fantasies is that Mother spends every last dime of that money before she dies. Yeah. Boy, was it cold out there. You know something I noticed about you tonight, Becky? What, Marco? You have an amazing way of talking a lot without really saying anything. I mean, uh, we sat around all night, we had dinner, and we talked about our backgrounds and where we came from and everything, but I still don't know any detail. I know about as much from you now as I did before we talked. I don't know what it is. Everybody I meet wants to know what happened to me before I came to Andy's. Now, Becky, it's just because when people like you, they want to know more about you. Well, my mind operates on the opposite direction on that subject. You know, Becky, I really do like you. Thank you, Marco. I'll thank you real nice, too. Shucks. Thank you, Becky. I think you're charming and delightful and very attractive. And you don't be surprised if I can't help myself and come downstairs tonight and start knocking on your door. Well, don't you be surprised if I don't open up. Oh, oh. oh come on, Marco. I know the difference between... Pretend hurting the real thing. You're just playing with me. Yes, of course I am. But I am serious about wanting to come downstairs. Well, at least you don't beat around the bush when you try to put the make on somebody. Now, wait a minute. Put the make. What kind of talk is that? You put the make on strangers. That isn't the way I meant it. Look, Marco, you and me have a lot in common. And I know you spent a lot of time in my part of the country. But you've been other places. You ain't no country boy. You're smart and citified and kind of slick. Now, does that make me a bad person? No. But I don't know if I trust you. Because I'm slick and citified? That and uh, you ask about as many questions as a newspaper reporter. All right. I'll try to contain myself from asking so many questions. I hope you won't hold that against me, Ben. As long as you stay up in your own room at night, I'll keep liking I'll try. I can't promise you that I'll do that, but I promise you I'll try. All right? Hey, that's your guitar over there? Uh-huh. How'd it get down here? I was practicing with the piano. I left it down here. Think maybe you could uh, play something for me? I'd love to. I see you're one of those performers who needs a lot of coaxing, huh? <laughs> Woo! Becky Lee Hunt. Now that's a good name for a country 
Western singer? Yep. As my income ever matches my name, Dolly Parton's gonna have to move over. Woo! I'm really, really sorry to bother you. I just didn't know where else to go or who else to turn to. I, I'm really unhappy. I told that Karen. I can see it in your face. I saw it the minute you came in the room. Oh, great. Maybe I should hang a sign around my neck, huh? It's perfectly understandable. You're separated from Larry. You're living in that house all by yourself with no one to talk to, just your memory. Yeah, sometimes. Well, even when Larry and I were together, I, I saw him once in a while, but now, nothing. Uh, you know, it's funny, Jen. When you talk to the four walls, they don't, they don't answer back. And I don't know. You know I was depressed at Brian's funeral today, and... Oh, I, I don't know. Well, maybe you just have to decide what you want and, and how you're going to go about getting it. Jenny, you don't understand. Something interferes with my thinking. It's like this afternoon I came home and I, I wandered around the house. I feel like a stranger there. Like I don't belong. Like it's not mine, like I'm a visitor. And I, I found some laundry and I thought, oh, wow, great, something to do. So I put the laundry in the machine. I just sat there, and I listened to the machine chugging away. And then I took the, the laundry out of the machine, and I put it in the dryer. And I just sat there. I sat there watching the clothes for about 30 minutes. And I just watched them get tossed around, My mind sometimes, my my thoughts don't don't lead anywhere. The, like the clothes. Just go.
then I'll go out and I'll have lunch or I'll go to a, a bar and I'll have a drink by myself and then the front of the unit and I, and I, I, what? I just, I just, Well, 
Oh, wonderful. My own sister thinks that I'm crazy. Come on, that is a Stone Age attitude to take about psychotherapy. I mean, what's crazy is having a problem and not being able to deal with it. I can deal with, with whatever problems I have by myself. Karen, didn't you just tell me that you're out of control, that you don't understand who you are, what you want? So I come to you, and I confide in you, and you just turn everything against me. You turn it into my fault. I'm not turning against you. I'm just saying that I think that you, you can get some help and that, that he can help you. I'm just saying that because I know about psychotherapy. Well, I don't need psychotherapy. I need my husband back. Look, Jenny, I thought that if I came over here, that you'd be able to understand me and understand my problems, but obviously you can't. All you can tell me is that I should go to a shrink. Well, thanks a lot, Jenny. Wait a minute, Karen. Look, don't run away from this. You know that's not going to help. You know everything, don't you? Except about your wonderful husband. Let me tell you something, Jenny. Someday, when you need a shoulder to cry on, and you will, be sure to come to me. I'll be as considerate of you as you were of me. I suppose, probably because 
She felt she was being forced to come here. She has no place else to go. Excuse me, but apparently she has found someplace else to go. But she has no training to do anything except play the piano. Oh, yes. So even if she were able to fend for herself mentally, she can't support herself. Look, there have to be lots of lounges where they have piano players. Oh, Peter, you don't understand. Melinda was a classical pianist, a child prodigy. Then she had an accident. She fell off the horse and got seriously hurt. And she hasn't been able to play since then? Well, not because of that accident. It was because of another accident. You see, my parents were at home at the time, and so when we reached them, they chartered a small plane so that they could hurry back. And that plane crashed, and they were both killed. Oh, my God. And that caused a psychosomatic reaction from Melinda, an hysterical paralysis of her arm, and pretty soon she was totally insane. Now the paralysis is gone, but is she sane? Or is she just walking around out there, unable to take care of herself? Well, I would like to be able to answer that for you, but I can't. Peter, if I have caused any further tragedy for that girl, I don't think I'll ever be able to live with myself. <laughs> Why should I be any different and not have any, huh? Okay. What now? 
to sit down and talk with him, right? Hey, Charlie. Hey, How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Chill. Okay. Let me have a... Let me have a scotch and water and uh, the half pint will have what? A diet Coke. Okay, come right up. Guess what I found out? I'm afraid to ask. Kathy is back in town already. Well... Brad, we knew she'd be back sooner or later. All right, yes. But suppose she goes and has an appointment with Dad tomorrow or something. Oh, I don't know. Sam, I, mean, I can hardly follow her around all over the place spilling coffee all over her every time she tries to take off her gloves. On the other hand, I have got to do something to keep Dad from seeing that ring. Look, I haven't the slightest idea. You're acting as if you don't care much either. Well, look, I'm a little bit tired. It's okay? I'm tired of the whole thing. Here we go. Hey, thank you very much. I mean, I thought since the inquest was over, we'd be through with all this stuff. Yeah, so did I. I mean, who could have possibly foretold that, that Lana's mother would give Kathy the ring? Not to mention, how could I have been so stupid as to leave it in her room the night she died? Well, how could you have been so stupid to give it to her in the first place? All right, Sam, you're perfectly right, but it is too late to do anything about that now. It's too late to do something about the rest of it, too. Kathy has the ring. She may or may not wear it when she sees Dad. There is just nothing we can do about it. I there has to be something we can do about it. Because if Dad sees that ring, he's going to know not only was I in Lana's room the night she died, he's also going to know that I lied through my teeth at the inquest. Well, look, I was the one who told you in the beginning that you should tell the truth and you wouldn't have this thing hanging over your head for the rest of your life. And go through the rest of my life without Jenny? No way, Sam. No way. Sam... I did what I had to do. One Life to Live will continue in approximately 30 minutes after the following live report from ABC News. General Hospital will be seen in its entirety following One Life to Live. We interrupt our regular program schedule to bring you the following special report from ABC News in Washington. Here. The only time a satellite needs a long-lasting power source that's free of the use of uh, solar energy, which can be derived from the sun, is when you go into deep outer space, for instance, if we should send a probe to the outer planets, there would not be adequate source of energy from the sun to uh, trigger our uh, solar cells, and we might need a power from atomic sources then, but I see no reason for us to continue with the option of nations to have uh, Earth orbiting satellites unless uh, much more advanced safety precautions can be initiated. Mr. President, since uh, I assume the subject will come up when you meet with uh, President Sadat, could you give us a general outline of your view toward our helping uh, Egypt acquire arms? We've been, uh, of course, facing the, the uh, continuing prospect for a number of years of providing some weapons into uh, the Mideast, heavily to uh, Israel, also to uh, Saudi Arabia, to Iran, and uh, to some degree, the non-attack uh, weapons to uh, Egypt. All these nations have requests to us for weapons. We now resume our regular program schedule after this from our local stations. We now continue One Life to Live, already in progress. General Hospital will be seen in its entirety approximately 23 minutes from now. Cook me dinner? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I can cook. Oh. I can, um, <laughs> oh, I'll fry, I can fry eggs, oh. right? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, listen, why don't you make me an egg tomorrow? Find me an egg tomorrow and we'll be even, all right? Okay, is it a deal? Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm. Hey, by the way, whose car was that in the driveway? I didn't recognize it. Oh, Vinnie and Wanda's. Oh, Yeah, Vinnie Kathy's Wanda. over there, too. Really? Uh-huh. Listen, I spoiled your evening. I kept you from having a nice dinner with your friends. How about dessert with them? Oh, oh, maybe they already finished dessert. So? We'd go there and just chat, chat, talk. What do you say? Oh, it would make you feel better. Well, if, if you want to, Brad. Yeah, sure, I like them too. I'm not sure about that. Well, I like them. I, I just, I don't relish the idea of living in the same house with them, but I like them. Come on. Hey, how about it? Let's go. Oh, oh I'd love to. Okay. Yeah. After you, madame. You keep got here just in time. I could tell by the gleam in Vinnie's eye he was going to polish off the
the last piece of that pie. <laughs> I'm sure glad you're not as good a cook as Anna. I weigh 300 pounds for sure. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm going to take that as a compliment. What he means is that I'm such a wonderful wife that I see to it that he is fit and almost trim. Oh. Oh, oh, hey, oh. hey, I've got a whole health club here. You can be as trim as you want. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter. You know, I mean, as long as Wanda loves me, you know. Pretty expensive, though, isn't it? No, not at all. Listen, no, I... wait a minute, wait a minute. That doesn't even matter. I forgot. My wife's a superstar. Oh, superstar. <laughs> no, it's nothing. Well, you were on your honeymoon, I did a commercial, the beer. Oh, and tell me, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's going to be on television. You know, and, and, and the producer wants it to do some more, you know? Pretty soon you're going to be turning on the tube, and uh, every time you turn it on, you're going to see Wanda there. Oh. And every time we go to the bank, there's going to be big bucks in it, huh? Oh, oh listen no. to him. I haven't even been on the air yet. Already he's got $100,000 in the bank. Oh. oh, no, no, no. $100,000 in the bank. <laughs> hey, where's Kathy? Yeah, I thought she was going to be here. She's on the phone in the kitchen, something to do with her magazine piece. It's so great they gave her that assignment. Yes. That's the first thing that's made her smile in months. Is she still upset about Lana's death? Yes, but I'm afraid she is. Vinny, what's happening down at the police station? Any clues as to who the hit-and-run driver was that ran Brian down? No, afraid not, Jim. But, uh, you know, we've been working on it. We've been uh, checking out cars because we got those two license numbers and we're trying to find a, a car that fits the description, you know, uh, the license. Do we go pay off? Yeah, yeah, sooner or later. Sooner or later, um, we get most everybody. I don't know how the man who did that can live with himself. Well, I'll tell you. When we get him, he's going to have a hard time living with us. Oh, hi, Kathy. Hi, Jenny. Hey, Kathy. I was just wondering where you were. Well, I was on the telephone to New York. Oh, good news. Yes, yes. The man I was unable to see yesterday, uh -huh. well, he can see me tomorrow. Oh, well, that means you'll be going into the city again tomorrow morning. Yeah, I think I'll probably take the early flight in. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, I just remembered. I left my stereo to be repaired, and they're supposed to deliver it tomorrow between 10 and 11, but I'm not going to be able to call them. I'll have to leave earlier than that. I'd be glad to go over and wait for her. Oh, Anna, would you? Yeah, yeah, and, and maybe she could even talk to your plan. Oh. <laughs> it may come as a surprise to you, Vince, but I don't talk to plants. Really? I hum to them. Here, here. <laughs> well, listen, that, that would be great, and I'll get you a spare key. But we have one. Don't we? You do? Yes. So you gave it to us before you moved over there. I have it on the uh, pegboard out in the kitchen. Oh, is that our phone? Uh, yes, I'll get it. Stay put. Well, I'm going to have to be going pretty soon. Are you going to be okay now? I always survive, don't I? One way or the other. You know, a little while ago, uh, when you were crying, at first I thought it was because you were feeling kind of, what, jilted by your sister, but you really are worried about her, aren't you? I guess I have a problem com communicating my real emotions to people. Even you, Peter, and like I said before, I feel I know you better than anyone in my view. I mean, except for Will Vernon, maybe. Yes, but he's my doctor, and that's different. And for some reason, Will always comes across as the doctor, no matter where we are. But he's been able to help you, don't you think? I mean, you've, you've made some progress. Yes, I, I think he's helped me an enormous amount. And, and when I say that to him, he always says to me, yes, but we still have a long way to go. Well, that's, that's just like Will. I mean, he's not going to let you off the hook easily. No, he doesn't let me get away with anything. Sometimes that just infuriates me. But... When I think about it later, and I let myself be objective, I realize the reason I got so angry was because he was right. Well, oh, will you listen to that? I mean, just you being, being able to say that, I mean, that, that talks a lot about progress. I'm so glad that's obvious to you, especially you. Peter, I am really so fond of you. Now, I know sometimes you get very disappointed in me, and maybe you even get angry at me. But I am trying, honest. I'm trying so hard. Lorraine, I think the important thing is that you find out what your destructive patterns are, and then you choose to break and change them. Right. And I think what Will has helped me most about it is finding what I do to myself in matters of love. And what's that? It's this eternal quest for a love that never ends simply, because... 
at least a man who can't love me back. You mean like Joe Riley? Please, please don't bring him up. Yes, actually, he's a very good example. Here he was, a married man who's extremely happy. And I fall for him. And then I convinced myself that I could get him. And I couldn't. And he was just one of many. So what if you ask yourself this question? If you habitually choose men with whom you can't have a relationship, do you indeed want to have a relationship? But I think that I choose men like that because I'm so afraid of getting hurt. But Peter, I am, I'm trying to work through that. And I really think that I'm ready for a mature, meaningful, fulfilling relationship. <laughs> Just about to lock up the clinic. 
sick when a kid walked in with a broken arm. Oh, that's too bad. Can I tell you, I've got to get up so early. I really think I'd better leave. Dad, would you mind driving me home? Yes, I would. I think you should walk. Come on, let's get your coat. Was that a joke? That's the joke. Oh, that's no. the joke. Oh, Ryan, no. <laughs> He just, 
He just wanted to sit there all alone, you know, in the dark. Jenny, do you realize that he hasn't really, really talked with anybody since the funeral? Well, Sam, people work out their griefs in different ways, and if that's the way he needs to work it out, then maybe you ought to leave him alone, at least for a little while. But, Jenny, this is more than just grief. I'm really even afraid to think about it, but... It seems like he's had a complete breakdown. around a load of 
possibilities. Screws everything out. Louses up your sex life. Louses up your sleep. Louses up your diet. Hold on, Becky. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Brad, this is Becky. She's the star of the show around here. Becky, Brad, Vernon. Hey, Glad to meet you, Brad. What do you say we have a drink? I'll meet you. Yeah, sure. I'd be glad to. Actually, that's kind of a euphemism because Becky doesn't really touch the hard stuff. I happen to know, though, that she's a far gone root beer freak. I'm afraid so. Uh, I like what you have. It's unlikely. 
Well, I'll tell you, it's an awful feeling to think that somebody's walking around with a set of keys to my apartment. Well, don't you worry about it, honey. First thing tomorrow morning, we'll call somebody and have all the locks in the house changed. Uh, tonight, you better come home and stay with us. No, Anne, I can't do that. You've got Larry and Danny staying there. You don't have room. We'll open up the sofa bed in the den. Well, honey, would you just do me a favor? Don't argue about this. I'd feel much better if you didn't sleep here tonight. I think he's right, Kathy. All right, all right. I'll go and get you things. I'll just do a minute. Good. Oh, I, I would prefer if you didn't really disturb anything in that room until we've had a chance to check it out. Well, I've got a nightgown on the bathroom door, and I'll get my toothbrush, all right? Okay. I'll just see you a minute. What do you think, Ed? How oh, strange. Doesn't fit the pattern of a professional burglar. Maybe it was an amateur. Maybe somebody with a very expensive drug habit to maintain, huh? But wouldn't that sort of person, uh, uh just take the obvious thing? Yeah, and also, where would they, somebody like that, gotten hold of a key? I'm ready, unless you want me for something else. Uh, no, no, no. I will need your keys, though, to lock up after you. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, by the way, Kathy, would you come by tomorrow morning and make an inventory? I want to have to have a list of everything that's missing. Well, at first glance, it doesn't look like anything's missing, but I'll be glad to make a check, yeah. Okay, thank you. I'll uh, leave these over at the house. After thank you, Ed. <coughs> yes, thank you very much. All right, all right. Good night. Yes, okay. Good night, Ed. Okay, Anna, would you really check to make sure the keys are in the kitchen? Yes, I will. Right. Good night, thank you. Right, good night. Good night. Right. Harris, let's get to work. Yes, sir. with the window sill. That's my can play something. Okay, sir. I'm telling you, Brad, this girl is a real talent. You best remember her name so that you can say you knew her when. Marco, you're embarrassing me. Becky, you got to learn to beat your own drum sometimes. Listen to me, I'm sounding like your agent. Could you bring us another drink here, please? You ready, Brad? Uh, yeah, I will be by the time by the time yeah. six. <laughs> no, hey. I'll pay for this round. Well, thank you, good buddy. I 
really should be get going. Well, okay. I, I want to thank you for everything, Jenny. Right. You know, I always wanted a, a sister. I, I kind of feel like I oh. have one now. Yeah, Sam, I don't know what I did to help. Oh, listen, just being here to talk to you was great. Oh, one thing. Um, please don't say anything to anybody about what we've been talking about, about Tony. Oh. I, you know, I, he may not want any, anyone to know. No, hey, Sam. Well, you gotta, don't rush off. Why don't you stay have a nightcap with us, okay? Uh, no, thanks. Anyway, I think you've had one already, haven't you? Well, I, well, I, should I offered the, uh, the repairman a drink from the bottle that I keep in my office. I mean, you know, I mean, thanking him, coming all the way out there in the middle of the night, practically, right? And naturally, you had to join him. <laughs> well, I, I had to be sociable. Oh, I think Anna and Jim are home. Hi, Ann. I was just going to come over and see you. Danny's fine. I haven't heard a peep out oh, of him all night. thank you. I'm sorry to run off without any explanation, but, um, Kathy had a very frightening experience tonight. What? Her house was burglarized. Oh, no. And the worst part of it is that the man was apparently still in the house when Kathy came home. He got out the bedroom window. Oh. <laughs> well, did, did he take anything? Well, we're not sure. The police wouldn't let Kathy touch anything. Uh, they're going to... It, Doctors, the fingerprints and all that. And Kathy's going to spend the night with us, naturally. I, I think that's probably a good idea. I mean, she must be very frightened. Well, she's all right now, but the thing is, Ed Hall is pretty certain that the burglar has the key to Kathy's front door. So naturally, she'd feel uncomfortable staying there. And until we have the lock changed... Oh, Lord, I almost forgot. Uh, we have the spare key to Kathy's door, and it's on the pegboard in the kitchen. I promised Ed I'd check and make sure we have it. Okay, good. Okay. Well, uh, I think I'll see if I can do anything for Kathy. Trouble between you before, but that's all straightened out now. 
Well, they deserve each other. Don't you like anybody? I like you. I don't like to see you getting involved with guys like that. I can take care of myself. Yeah, that's what you said about Clint Buckley. You're never gonna let me forget that, are you? Well, excuse me, Richard. Thanks again for all your help. Well, that is not going to help. You had enough wherever you've been. I know. Talk about stupid. Well, come on, Sam, knock it off, will you? I know it was stupid. I know I almost got caught and the whole thing was for nothing anyway. But don't you see him? We were all over there after dinner and we were... Anna was talking about how the keys were hanging right there in the, in the kitchen and I, I was looking at Kathy, she was sitting right there with us. I could see she didn't have the ring on. So, then you had to make up the story about the health club? It, it seemed like a good idea. I just, I, I went through the kitchen, I grabbed the keys and I just went tearing off to her place. Tell me what happened. Why didn't you get the ring? Give me enough time. I, she must have left right after I, I, I did. I, all I know is I, I got in. I, I no sooner had I gotten into a bedroom, I just found the jewelry box. And all of a sudden I heard the front door open. Oh, Brad. She almost caught me, Sam. She would have caught me except for the phone ringing. She talked on the phone for a few minutes and I went out the bed, bedroom window. I, Brad, you must have a, uh, fingerprints all over the place. The police are in there dusting for them right now. No, I wore gloves. There won't be any fingerprints. Oh, I hope not. Oh, Brad, please, please don't do anything like this again. Sam. Look, Sam, I've got to get that ring somehow. Oh. If Dad ever sees it, he's going to put the whole thing together. My alibi is going to be shot, they will reopen the inquest, and I will probably be indicted. Brad, you didn't have anything to do with my death. I know that. I know that, but don't you see, I've, I've, I've obstructed justice. Is everything all right over there? Yeah, I guess, well, I, I guess I'd better be going. I'll see you. You take care of yourself. Sam. Here. Well, thank you so much for talking, Jenny. Yeah. yeah. I'll call you, okay? Okay. Okay. Bye. Uh, bye bye. Is Kathy all right? Oh, yeah. Now that she's over being scared. Oh, I would be too. Imagine having someone rifle through your bedroom when you're in the other room like that. Well, I mean, they don't know that for sure. I mean, for all they know, the guy could have been long gone. Well, except that he didn't take some things that he probably would have if he had the time. So they think that she probably came in and scared him away. Jim thinks that there's a good chance that they'll catch him now. Really? Why? Well, uh, because there were some finger, uh, some footprints, very good footprints in the snow outside the window. And so they're making a cast of them right now. Oh, Ty, let's go to bed, okay? Uh-uh. You go on, I'm going to be in a little bit. I just want to finish my drink, okay? Okay. Good night. turned in that burglary report. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I understand. Um, listen, I saved a piece of pie for you and a glass of milk from dinner. Would you like it? Oh, would I? Great, yes. Is Kathy all right? Well, she's a little shaken, but she's okay. I stopped over to Craig's on my way home just to check out a couple of things. Sounds like an awfully peculiar kind of burglary. Yeah. Definitely a rank amateur, all right, except for that one thing. Oh. The key. Yeah, right. I don't know anybody as smart 